Games at 10 starts now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for your Delta News at 10. I'm Lakia Scott. Today is Thursday, May 19th, 2016. We continue to follow the desegregation order issued to the Cleveland School District by the Justice Department. This time we caught up with a Delta native who gives us more of an inside look at what the federal court order could mean for the Cleveland School District. WXVT's Denise Turner has more. Started in the 1960s with 131 school children, they filed a petition with the federal court with the desire to integrate schools. Caleb Chambers, a political science student at the Delta State University, explains how the decision affects Cleveland schools. The Brown versus Board of Education decision was handed down from the United States Supreme Court. Uh, schools were told that they uh, must integrate. Um, eventually, those school districts that uh, were still segregated had groups of children uh, come to federal court and decide to, uh, to petition the court to integrate those schools. The Department of Justice fought the case against the school board to make changes that would eventually produce a fully integrated school system. The school district here has made multiple changes over the years. Um, they have proposed uh, plans and uh, changes such as removing the attendance lines and other things in the hopes that that would satisfy the federal court case. But it wasn't enough. The court really wanted to be satisfied with here was uh, not just for the rules and the, the uh, de jure segregation to be removed, but its actual effects to be gone. Bringing us to May 13, 2016, the U.S. Department Judge Deborah Brown's ruling to adopt the United States Department of Justice's plan for a single district high school and middle school for both the high and middle schools. This decision means that uh, the court took uh, the federal plan, uh, the plan the Department of Justice proposed, uh, and has told the Cleveland School District that they have to come up with a timeline to implement it. On Monday, the Cleveland Board of Education and its attorney met in a closed executive session. The outcome of the meeting was a decision to appeal the court's ruling. Here in, Miss in, in Cleveland, Mississippi, uh, we do have excellent public schools. Um, and I think that the unfortunate side of this recent news is that the catchy headline uh, is that integration has just now come to Cleveland. And that's not really the case. Um, what is true is that this was uh, not as integrated of a school system as it could be. Uh, and that's what the court, I think, is, is really hoping to find with this plan being implemented. In Cleveland, Denise Turner, WXVT, your Delta News. And we will, of course, keep you updated as the board seeks an appeal. Well, a national organization asking for help locating a Delta teen missing for seven months. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children issued an alert today for 17-year-old Lasasha Golden. The organization says Golden is from Belzona and has been missing since October 25th. She is described as a black female, 5 feet 9 inches tall. Local police tell us they have no information about Golden. If you've seen her or know of her whereabouts, contact local law enforcement or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 800-843-THE LOST. Well, a Mississippi police officer among 19 people facing immigration charges accused of committing visa or marriage fraud. The indictments unsealed today in Jackson alleged that Ivory Lee Harris, while a Jackson police officer, prepared a series of false crime reports that allowed Indian men to qualify for non-immigrant visas and obtain legal U.S. status. Prosecutors also allege that four female U.S. citizens entered into sham marriages to help Indian men obtain legal status, usually in exchange for money. The Indictments alleged that Simpson Lloyd Goodman of Waynesboro, Georgia, lawyer helped submit fraudulent immigration papers. The men were scheduled to be arraigned today. Well, authorities now releasing names of three people killed in a deadly train crash, according to Madison County Coroner Alex Breland. 35-year-old Michael Ray Allen Jr. is one-year-old son Michael Ray Allen and seven-year-old stepdaughter Michaela West died instantly of blunt force trauma last night. Authorities say the pickup truck they were in collided with an Amtrak train. An Amtrak spokesperson says the Chicago-bound train hit the vehicle in Flora just outside of Jackson. No train crew members or passengers were injured in the wreck. Well, a man convicted of gunning down a Greenville rapper seeks a new trial. 43-year-old Dana Ford asking the Mississippi Supreme Court to overturn his conviction. Before a three-judge panel, his lawyer argued Ford's murder conviction should be thrown out, claiming prosecutors improperly introduced evidence of an earlier shooting at a 2010 trial. The attorney says discussion of that shooting had nothing to do with the crime, saying it poisoned the jury. Ford is one of four men convicted in the murder of Marvin Stuckett, who was gunned down in 2008 
following a fight at a nightclub. Stuckett was one half of the rap duo Needle in a Haystack, a group that had toured regionally and recorded multiple albums. A Delta motorist escapes injury when her car catches fire. Viewer Marty Greer shared this video of a car fire on Highway 82 near Con Road in Washington County. The Leland Volunteer Fire Department put out the blaze. The cause of the fire is under investigation. And Mississippi State names one of its new leaders. Former University of Alabama President Judy Bonner is now the university's new provost. The college board still must vote to approve the appointment. She's expected to begin work as MSU's chief academic officer on July 1st. MSU President Mark Keenum says Bonner's broad experience set her apart. Bonner became president in Tuscaloosa in 2012 after serving as provost for nearly a decade. She was selected over three other finalists for the job. Former MSU provost Jerome Gilbert left last year to become president of Marshall University in West Virginia. Well, renovation of a Delta medical facility enters a new phase. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held this afternoon at Leland Medical Center. Operated by the Delta Health Alliance, the clinic serves about 2,700 patients, many of whom have no medical insurance. Interior renovations include technology upgrades with exterior work to begin next week. Well, we, we're just finishing this renovation. We've got one more stage to go. So when you go in and look, you see really kind of two rebuilt wings. The $1.2 million project is paid for through partnerships with Delta Regional Authority and the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Rural Development Division. Well, the Bill versus Wood challenge continues, and we have a winner. The Mississippi Blood Services mobile collection vehicle is outside Greenville City Hall today. City employees and residents were asked to stop by to donate. The challenge, a friendly competition between Greenville and Greenwood to see who could get the most donations. Well, Greenwood's drive was held last week, and Mississippi Blood Services says Greenwood collected 21 units to Greenville's 18. Organizers tell us each donation can save up to three lives. MBS officials say they hope the challenge becomes an annual event between the cities. Well, a wet start to this year's growing season leads to a later than usual start for the Greenville Farmers Market. The opening weekend event will get underway June 4th at the Farmers Market Pavilion in downtown Greenville. The market open from 8 till noon and open through October on Saturdays and Wednesdays. That fresh food that's being grown here and being sold here to the community. And, and health is a major issue within the Mississippi Delta as well, uh, and Mississippi as a whole. So, you know, providing quality access to food, uh, healthy food, is very important. Well, Boggs also says they are still accepting vendor forms for anyone that would like to sell at the market. You can find sign-up sheets at their website, MainStreetGreenville.com. Mark your calendars and save your seats for the fifth annual Mayor's Prayer Luncheon. The event will kick off next Wednesday at the Washington County Convention Center around 1130. The keynote speaker, Dr. William Bill LaForge, president of Delta State University. You can purchase your tickets for $5 in advance or $10 at the door. For more info, call the mayor's office at 662-378-1534 or 378-1501. And Greater Greenville Development Foundation is still taking sign-ups for the Dragon Boat Festival. The deadline to get the early bird special on registration will be extended to the close of business on Friday, May 20th. Teams will save $150 to $200 by signing up early. The foundation will accept verbal and email commitments, and 12 teams have already signed up. So if, we can, if you can call us or uh, go to our website, MainStreetGreenville.com, and actually uh, express your interest in participating in this year's Dragon Boat Festival, we'll still give you the discount uh, early bird registration, which can save teens up to 10, uh, 15 to 20 percent off their registration fees. Well, Dragon Boat information and other Main Street Greenville events can be found online at MainStreetGreenville.com. Coming up on your Delta News at 10, a Delta Elementary School working to close the gap. We'll explain ahead, plus Eric is standing by with your weather forecast right here on XPT, your Delta News at 10. Night, good time, had by all. And that's going to wrap it up for sports mm -hmm. and uh, the NBA playoffs resuming tonight, Eastern Conference Finals.
The Cavs win again, and they win big, 108-89 to over the Raptors. They lead the series two games to none. All right. What do you always find these smart, wise students? Oh, wow. I tell you, well, <laughs> Shaw, they have a lot of them. Very mm -hmm. blessed. Uh, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. a great school year for them. And a lot of the athletes now, they're looking forward to the next level. Moving yeah, on. Yeah, their head on a straight. Yep. Their head is on straight, There rather. you go. Mine isn't on straight. <laughs> Likewise here. All right. All right. Thank you, Stephen. We'll be right back. <laughs> Twisted. Yeah. Word. Yeah.